I'm like, and everyone, how's everyone doing? Welcome to Ramadan story time. Today, I'm going to read you two books. The first one is called Solway by Lupita Nyong'o. Sulwe was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn, Baba the color of dusk, and Mitch, her sister, was the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Solway either. People gave her sister Mitch pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Solway names like Blackie and Darkie and Night. Solway felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. Look, there's Solway. She's all by herself. Solwe dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. Look, there's her sister. She's playing with her friends. They're playing soccer. They're playing jump rope. Can you see that? So she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. Look, she's got her eraser. She crept into mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from mama. Solwe decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. They're slowly eating a banana and bread and cauliflower. There's some crackers. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When Mama came in to wake her for school the next morning, Solo arose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. Look, there's her mama. Solo told her mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Solo, she muttered. And what does it mean? Star, Solo whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Solway's stomach the way she always did for her, you are beautiful, Solway sighed. Well, you are beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful. My sweet, real, my sweet, real beauty comes from your mind and your heart, it begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you, now up. Now up you get, and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? 
how could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said, come with me. Solway hopped onto the star and off they went. Look at that beautiful star. Do you see it? Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day, and they were sisters. Look, can you see day and night? They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, night got fed up and wet, walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then Day grew too long. Day began to really miss her sister. So did everybody else. Can you imagine if it was Day all the time and if it was never night? There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find night, and she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Night. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. There's Day talking to Night. She's trying to convince her. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors, and sunlight can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night, everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. Look at how pretty the water is in the dark. Can you see the jellyfish? They're glowing. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that night did not need to change? Not even a little, not even at all. Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows, and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on their sunniest day and their darkest night and every shade in between. 
Together, they make the world we know light and dark, strong and beautiful. So Leah rose the next morning, beaming. There would be no hiding more. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she ever needed a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Look at all those beautiful stars. The end. All right. So we're gonna move on to the second book. And the second book is called Adam and God's Creation. Adam and God's Creation, written by Khadija Khati. As the day broke and the sun awoke, the animals scrambled and joked. From among the leaves, a mouse sneezed and a toad croaked. Roar, said the lion from behind a tree. See how fierce I can be. Hum, said the giraffe. Look at me. I'm towering higher than you can see. Look at the giraffe. He's almost taller than the tree. Leap, cried the ostrich. Look how I dance and prance. Grr, growled the gorilla. I have a coat that's soft and fluffy. Can you see the gorilla? A wise old owl sighed as he watched them play. I know what story I need to teach these young animals. Little friends, come huddle around this tree. I have a story to share with some important lessons for you. The young animals ran over to a shaded spot and eagerly waited to hear the story's plot. The old bird lost his teeth, shined his beak, then finally began to speak. Do you ever wonder how we all came to be? I know, we came from outer space, said the giraffe. No, silly, we're not aliens. We were delivered by storks, obviously, said the ostrich. You're all wrong. We came from magic and fairy dust. Actually, all things started from God and what he willed them to be. First, he created the heavens, the earth, and everything in between. Then came the creation of Adam, the first man, something never been seen. Adam lived in the heavens, a most extraordinary place, full of rivers and gardens, a beautiful space. Do you see the gardens? Look, that's heaven. I heard heaven is out of this world. That sounds so cool. Wow, said the zebra. Adam and his wife, Hawa, had everything they pleased until Iblis convinced them to eat from the one forbidden tree. From that point on, man was sent to the earth to live their best life and prove to God their worth.
God scattered the earth with reminders of his blessings for all to see, like the mountains, the seasons, and the vast open seas. Even you and me are reminders of God's blessings. God made everything that you see in every shape, color, and size. All were created equal in God's eyes. Everything was created unique, like the birds, the animals, and the trees. But we cannot succeed without helping each other. So let's be friends with one another as we live in this world together, for each of us is as beautiful as the other. Look at all the animals holding hands. And that is the end. Did you like it? All right. Well, thank you so much for attending uh, Ramadan story time this week. Inshallah, we'll see you all next week. Assalamu alaikum.